Good news and bad news, listeners. Berlin might be able to force thousands of fancy holiday flats back onto the rental market thanks to a good court ruling for once. The bad news is that Brandenburg is probably about to let Mr. Muskness clear a forest so that he can build a million electric cars. Plus, Tesla's robot coffee is shit. Hooray! In Berlin's heart, when news is unveiled, Megan in Conrad with German tales. The German news, it's tough to bear, but with Mega Cans, they're ready to repair. Conrad, daily news in hand. Megan feels to spare time to crack those cans. With each sip she takes, the Meg is her shield, but will it last the news? Cause that was the deal. Time for another episode of Megan's Megacon. I'm Megan. I'm here in Berlin with ex Berliner Magazine and Conrad Werner. Hello, Conrad. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm very well, thank you. Have you noticed what it's doing outside? Yes, I have because I can still see it. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's, we're recording this at 18:22. Yeah. It's still fucking light outside. Yeah. Made it through. Made it through. Well you done, can, everyone. You can smell the spring in the air. It is actually really, really nice. The sort of in freshness. Berlin. It's mm. gorgeous. We didn't really have a spring last year. I'm hoping no. this is not fake spring, but no. I feel like maybe it's not. I got my first text from my garden mm. group, and they're turning the water on this weekend. What does Road that mean? Two is turning the water on in the gardens. Okay. They've checked it out. It's not going to be frosty again. And does that mean what, what happens when they turn the water on? Is there a sort of ceremony? I don't know, because I'm not party. on Strange 2, so okay. I'm never really there for it. But yeah, they probably get together and like, they're always drinking at like 11. <laughs> Maybe they, do they day s- day, slaughter any, a lamb or any something? Any kind of, <laughs> God, I wish, that'd be great. <laughs> we do have like a little summer fest, it's really nice. Okay. I can't wait to start my, that part of my year. See my wee pal, who's 80, she's my best friend. All right, does she? my best friends. She comes out of hibernation about oh, this time. God. Yeah. Right, we're going yeah. to have to start, but guess what? I, what? you might, you horrifyingly just turned to me before we started and said, I have a lot to tell you, which <laughs> I'm not excited about, but I have got new megas. Oh yeah, okay. No, and there's new 330 one. mils. Woohoo! Ooh, in a slim can. absolute cocktails. I have not seen these before, so you have a choice. This is an absolute cocktail. You can have pineapple fizz. Or berry fizz. I'm imagining they're going to be sweet muck, but we have to, this is part of the job. And someone's I'm got to do it. Equally, sort of, not even nonplussed, minus, mm. as someone said to me once, and I nearly died laughing. I'll buy either. And what, which one would you like? Pineapple, please. Oh, Was that the one you wanted? No. <laughs> okay. Just take it. Okay. Okay, so this is, they're in a tall can. Yeah. But still 330 mils. And what I like, they're sort of a, They look really 80s. Mm. They've got a little illustration of a cocktail shaker. Yeah. And it all looks kind of 80s graphic design. Uh, I I suppose the the, the, the 80s aesthetic is back in now. I I wouldn't know. It's all 90s now, isn't it? I don't know. No idea. Who cares? But it looks very nice. Is this 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 essentially a pina colada? It It says pineapple fizz. I don't know, because the pina colada's also got coconut in it, hasn't it? Oh, has it? Oh, Ooh, I don't know. putting coconut in a mega, that's going <laughs> to... Maybe. I don't know. I don't mind a pina colada. Well, you could have the water, coconut water, couldn't you? Yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mine's got strawberries on it, which I'm very anxious about. Huh. Oh, God, can I smell yours from <laughs> the sweetness? Mm. Oh, yeah, it's very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But it's very nice. I like pineapple. Big pineapple fun. So I can taste the sunbeams. I can taste fuck all. This is not good. Well, I knew I wasn't going to like it because I don't like the berry kind of ones or any sweet one. Is it like a Fruits of the Forest thing? It's exactly like a Fruits of the Forest. I really like a Fruits of the Forest yogurt. Mm. And this is what this tastes like, that flavour, but without the creamy deliciousness and instead water and then underneath the water vodka. Just lurking, lurking underneath the water. I can sort of tell like a, what they wanted to do, which is make like a little spritzer or a seltzer. Hmm. Anyway. Well, maybe they're expecting you to pour it out into a glass and put ice in it or something. Yeah, well, then they should have manufactured a <laughs> mega can, should they? 
and okay. put like weird 80s writing in Sildo in a Spati in Kreuzberg. <laughs> yeah. That's a different... I know. Oh, well, anyway, anyway, we've got a lot to get through here. Oh, God. So... You have a lot to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Let's begin. So, well, uh, we'll do the easy one first. So, a couple of uh, weeks ago, the the higher administrative court finally, finally decided, this is good news, oh. we'll have the good news first, that the city of Berlin is allowed to reconvert holiday apartments back into rental apartments, even if they have been, they were established as a, a holiday apartments before 2014, which is when they brought in the law. Uh-huh. There's a, something called the the Zweckentfremdungsgesetz, sort of mis, misappropriation law, <laughs> brought in in Berlin 2014. Uh, okay, yes. And to it, make something foreign from its purpose. Mm-hmm. Thanks, German. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm so glad I learned you. <laughs> <laughs> so the purpose of homes is for people to live in, right? But, this is easy. Yes. <laughs> yes. But. Some people have been using them for other purposes, such mm. as renting them out on Airbnb mm-hmm. for quite a lot of money. And now, well, you can do that, but you have to ap- apply for a permit. It's fine if you're just renting out you know, a room in your house mm-hmm. or if you're going away for a week like, and you're renting out your apartment, that's fine. But what's not so fine is if you buy a whole building and then put the whole building on Airbnb. And I've definitely seen buildings around that are that. Yeah. So if you do that, then you have to apply for some kind of permit and the uh, local district council can decide whether to give you that permit or not. And it costs money, the permit. So so this law was brought in 10 years ago and the court that uh, and there was a there was a case of these we're talking about within the ring i should make clear not the whole of berlin just with inside the ring mainly okay it's like the, the most desirable part the yeah. most expensive part of uh, berlin and yeah so there was a, a case in in Mitte of the gorky apartments where they bought some flats they bought like 27 I'm gonna, flats i'm just gonna google this right now <laughs> Gorky apartment, they bought 27 flats and turned them into 37 furnished luxury flats, which they put, which they rented out on a nightly or weekly basis, basically yeah. holiday places, and including two penthouses. Now, if you go on the Gorky Apartments website, if I do, yes, I you'll will. see okay. how much the penthouses cost. You can only get them for a minimum of three nights. And for three nights, in a, this is like a 200 square meter apartment it costs about four grand that's for the penthouse and then there's like the normal smaller apartments you're looking at two or three hundred a night i mean these look nice dogs are large mm. your second home in so a what happened was t- uh in 2016 uh the person the landlords a permit ran out and they applied for a new permit and the berlin government or the local Mitte district council refused to give them a permit and then the land landlord took them to court and this court case lasted eight years <laughs> fuck me because <laughs> they were caught paying more appeals and it went up to the supreme and all court this time gorky has been able to the gorky yeah. apartments they've been able to continue to rake it in right <laughs> These are on Weinberg. The Weinberg's big. It's a pretty nice bit of <laughs> Berlin. And so they've been like raking it in all this time for eight years, and they've been like keep having it appeals and then more appeals, uh-huh. and it, and they took it to the federal constitutional court, which is the highest court in Germany. And the federal constitutional court said, after sitting on it for a few months, said actually this is nothing to do with us. This has to be decided by the Berlin administrative court, who'd already yeah. decided on. It. They kicked it back down. And so like, all this took eight years. And then finally, a couple of weeks ago, the administrative court upheld its earlier decision and said, no, the Berlin government can, if it wants to, um, force landlords to turn holiday apartments back into rental apartments and put them on the market because of the oh. situation in Berlin where there's just nowhere to live. I mean, there's like, there's, there's, you know, it's like a terrible shortage of affordable housing. And and this is a problem in the whole of Europe. Like, there's no city in Europe that doesn't mm-hmm. have this problem, especially mm-hmm. cities where you get a lot of tourists. It's a massive problem because it's just way more lucrative for uh, landlords to put these on Airbnb or, or just put them on and uh, rent them out. 
as holiday homes. And yeah, so most cities have laws like this now, but they're hard to enforce. So the EU <laughs> has come up with a new framework, also voted on just 10 days ago, mm. passed the European Parliament, which is a large majority, I was told. And they said this now forces platforms like airbnb and booking.com to register everyone who if you so if you want one of the if you want to rent your uh, home out mm -hmm. you have to register and now it is uh, up to airbnb to check that they comply with the local laws which wasn't before the case before oh fucking class <laughs> so before airbnb just said we have a register but it's our register and but you know it's still it was still up to the district Everybody council to police it jack shit yeah apart from raking in whatever percentage they take <laughs> yeah. out of all of these things so now airbnb is liable for to check that people are complying with the local laws which was not earlier the case earlier it was like up to the district council to police everything it took ages and usually they couldn't do it because they yeah. just they just didn't have it and the EU framework says that there has to they, they have to make their data available to the local district council so they can check themselves as well. So So they fine. can kind of go in and do rather than having to police everything like a, yeah. a great German a Stichprobe, like a yeah. random test. They can go in and just yeah. like sort of see yeah, no, no local council has the, that kind of staff, you know. That no local can, council seems to have um, any ability to do anything yeah. at the moment yeah. so, in Berlin, let alone fucking chase up Airbnb's stuff. Yeah. This is great. So according to Stephanie I Remlinger... People listening to this and like the situation is so desperate in Berlin, like people hearing this news and like going and taking their documents and their shufa forms and just going to queue at, at the gorky apartments already like <laughs> like it's I a know. fucking taylor swift concert or something <laughs> yeah they are really nice apartments everyone they look really lovely <laughs> oh yeah they're really nice so yeah so apparently according to the berlin tenants association you know like the meter for ein it's called mm-hmm he, the, the guy I spoke to, estimates that maybe up to 10,000 apartments across Berlin could be affected wow. by this and could be put back on the market because of this. That's also what uh, Stephanie Remlinger, who is the mayor of Mitte, she is of the Green Party. She also said that this is like a massively important court verdict for mm -hmm. us. And we are already, we already have 1,700 cases that we're going to re-examine now based on this precedent. And that's, that's like each of those cases is like multiple apartments. That's just in Mitte. So, and she reckons like two thirds of those 1,700 could be including apartments that would have to go back on the rental market. And yeah, rents did you know this rents how fast rents have gone up in the last few years it's quite startling oh it says the homeowner here sitting here yeah, <laughs> yeah we're aware <laughs> well well because it was kind no, of no that's I, my rent i'm very lucky because i got in to my apartment in 2015 yeah and that was just before stuff went mental in neukölln and, and kreuzberg and stuff like yeah. it's so during the pandemic they kind of stagnated rental prices at about average the average was uh, 10 euros a square meter mm -hmm. since then they've gone up to 14 euros a square meter since the pandemic that's just in the last two years mm. since like since 22 that's like that's like 50 well, percent rise had the, in, two in years. berlin there was the meat and deckle for a while which yeah which also helped obviously. which capped literally the cap yeah but then they, thanks to the CDU and FTP, yeah, who are funded hugely by the, uh, the, the, the what what is property development? Thank you, property developer industry. Property um, thing. Anyway, another thing I didn't realize was that the construction, because everyone says, well, a lot of people say, well, we need to build more flats, you know, build more flats. But there's been like a massive stagnation in the mm. construction industry because of inflation yeah. because of the rise in material costs so that there, there isn't the construction companies yeah. a they don't have the workers and then b they don't have the money to pay for all the materials to build new flats and so even yeah. and, and and also new flats are just going to be expensive anyway they're not going to be cheap new flats why would you build a cheap new flat it wouldn't make you any money <laughs> you know if you're going to build a flat you want to build luxury flats yeah um yeah so yeah so i don't know 
So no, and I, I didn't, think this is yeah. like, I mean, yeah, people want to have luxury flats, so maybe keep building them and stuff. But this seems to be like a step in a more, and I'm good that the EU is, and yeah. I don't want to learn anything more about this. Obviously, you've given me an overview. I don't want to hear. I just don't. <laughs> we just have one fucking thing where I'm like, okay. This, this is quite good. Like a great idea. No, it's, it is mainly good news. And what's also interesting... But if it frees up all these flats, and I, it yeah. sounds like if it's now the onus is on... Well, first of all, if there's this legal thing of like, no, you can do it. And yeah. it's back and forth between these different courts. And then also, if you put it actually on the companies... Oh, good, you've turned a light on. I was like, <laughs> I'm really sleepy in here. Yeah, it's quite a lot of dark. Okay, cool. Because I have sort of seen these things like crop up and the thing is they're these short-term rental apartments and they're like a lot of different places they look a little bit like student housing and stuff and what i think they do is do these workarounds where because you actually have very very good rights as a renter in in Hmm. berlin in germany like 80 percent of people rent here and it's great and you can do you know you really are you've got a lot of rights People are obviously like these gorky people and I feel a bit bad for these gorky. You're like, they're just doing whatever else they're doing. We just happen to have, there's, there's probably other, you know, equally. Anyway, people what? actually end up living in these apartments for longer term, maybe. I think that happens as well. Like people, they say they're kind of temporary or holiday, but people who are here actually working, stay in them for a bit long. I don't know. Yeah, well, they probably stay looking for exactly. a place to live and then they end yeah. up staying for three months in the same yeah. holiday at home, which just costs so them a fortune. So they're profiting hugely yeah. from the problem yeah. that they are... <laughs> Helping you to know, create, yeah. Yeah, like hotels serve a specific purpose. If someone has to stay in a hotel for three months, it's not really because there's a lack of hotel route, you know. it's Yeah, no, I mean, I just thought it was kind of an interesting court ruling which just set a precedent and, and it plays into that. And, it, and apparently it's just a problem in the whole of Europe and in, in every yeah. most cities now. I mean, what's interesting about about the, the, the European vote was that it was it did not divide the parties like it was every the, the uh, every party sort of was on the on board with this because okay. they already noticed that it is a problem even um, the ftp even the business bros well i didn't get into who i don't i haven't checked out okay. every who voted it's the it's european true. parliament as well look, so we said we weren't going to look any closer <laughs> yeah don't look any closer it's cool <laughs> Moving on. But yeah, it is. I mean, fair fucks because it's fucking Airbnb, all their trendy nonsense. And it's just like, yeah, yeah. in cities, it just does. It does. If it's someone's house, fine. And I'm sure it allows people to have an extra income. And I know people that do that. And that's great. Yeah. So according to Airbnb, 40 percent of their Berlin users are private people who are just renting out and they're supplementing their income. It's about 40 percent, they said. Yeah. I'm still less than half Airbnb <laughs> fucking dicks. That's a lot. Sixty percent are corporate fuckers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Quite a lot, yeah. <laughs> I don't like and surely that can be They seem proud of it because they put that in the statement and I asked them for a statement yeah, it was a big and that's city. They, they were like forty percent. Loads. We're helping people. They're like, you know, we're help- it's like Amazon. They're like, we're helping small businesses, you know. And are you? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> like, I'm, but you're helping but also profiting off them and that's fine mm. but don't tell me I hate all this fucking millennial bullshit where they tell me that like it's something and I, I think I think it started do you know when like brands started talking to you in this like cutesy voice and the cutesy packaging on things mm. I'm a recyclable cop uh, fine but then it, it allows like Big corporations, Airbnb is a fucking massive corporation and that's fine. Do business, but at least fucking don't shit in my hand and call it a Sunday. Sorry. No, that is... Do you know what I mean? It's this cutesy, like, helping connections and bringing you closer to Oh, yeah, they all say that. Absolute horse shit. It's just money. You're just the Hiltons. (laughs) You're just Trump. It's fine. (laughs) Just be, yeah. just be, just fuck. At least Trump, like to be fair, he just owns it, doesn't he? He's like, yeah. I'm a capitalist pig. <laughs> like, and that you can almost respect. <laughs> yeah, buy us some steak knives. Um, don't buy anything. Don't give him any money. Or some trainers. Yeah, <laughs> these ridiculous trainers. Anyway, talking of 
corporate Oh, God, fox. I didn't even mean to do that segue. I forgot what was coming up because I had half a mega and you gave me good news. And now we have to get into the absolute squelching cesspit that is Elon Musk and his Tesla fucking bullshit. Yeah, so today I went to visit the Tesla Giga factory. Good God. <laughs> In uh, Grünheide, yeah, outside Berlin, a lovely spot. Yeah, uh, not quite as lovely anymore because there's a massive factory in it, mm. and uh, <coughs> you might have, you may have heard that Musk and Tesla want to essentially double the size of this factory. It's already extremely big. Now I, I haven't want to... been. On, I've been to Grünheide a couple oh. of times because our lovely so... friend has a thing there and it's really nice but how big it like where is the factory in relation to the little t- the very very picturesque town it's about it's about two kilometers from the okay. town itself it's by a, a train station called Fangschleuse. oh yeah oh i know that place you know Fangschleuse. i do know Fangschleuse. <laughs> we used to go mushroom picking there ah well it's really green and foresty and nice well, I don't know when you went there. But, not anymore. Uh, <laughs> That's where it was. Oh, no, not Fangschleuse. <laughs> so not only... Beautiful woods. Yeah. So the woods near the Tesla factory are now being occupied by the by the people that occupy, by the brave people that... By our and, consciences. <laughs> by our consciences. By the people that we should be going out and kissing the <laughs> ground they walk on. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to visit the protest camp, mm-hmm. uh, which has been there for two weeks now. Because to protest against Tesla's um, uh, plans to cut down that bit of forest and next and double the size of the the factory, which will which they his aim is to produce a million a million electric cars a year in that factory. Um, I just it's, it's, it's like. I can't really get my head around that. A million electric cars a year they want to put. Anyway, and That's... there is a big issue with the water for the local area. So in their contract, in Tesla's contract, they have a thing saying that the local con- the authority has to provide them with so much water, which is like a lot. Obviously, they need a lot of water. And that's a big issue. And there's there's worries about because they have a lot of lithium and yeah. the the potential for destroying the uh, environment then is yeah you can imagine i mean there's like there's a lot of biodiversity it's, it may be time for us to realize that elon musk is not going to solve the environmental crisis <laughs> no, for us no uh, i mean it's a bit, bit different from the you know shucks. hambacher forst and all the you know what we were talking about a couple of years ago about the the, the coal mines that are being sent this is sort of an electric car thing but it it's is new, also it's the new version of this. It's the mm. twenty twenty four version of mm. of that. And again, yeah, we're just so not. We're. I went to visit this uh, camp today, and okay. it's pretty. It's pretty amazing what they've set up in two weeks. Because yeah. I didn't really realize what they do. They they have these tree houses. They call them tree houses. But essentially, they build a shed on the ground and then haul it up with pulleys between the trees. They put it. They kind of what? tie it to the trees. And they pull it up. They build this shed on the ground. Like it's really like like the engineering that goes into it. You just, they just they, they build a sort of garden shed, right? <laughs> and then and yeah, and then attach it to two trees and then haul it up. And they have this sort of te- tree protection thing. And they, and they, these things are like twenty thirty meters off the ground. Ooh. And and they live there. And so they had a. So it's I'm not really quite clear on it they had a permit to do this protest until tomorrow which is march 15th Mm -hmm. so they are preparing this weekend to be forcibly cleared by the police so we might have a proper scenes this weekend if the police decide to try and clear them out um and why can't they live in the woods well because uh, the woods the the woods are currently owned by the state of brandenburg but Tesla wants to buy them to cut them down and extend the, the the factory. And yeah, so that's a big issue. And the thing about it is that the they had a vote on it. The local area had a vote on it. I'm glad I've got this disgusting <laughs> strawberry juice vodka water. So there's a huge... So it's not just the protesters that are against it. Mm-hmm. The locals are also against it. They had a vote on it. 62% voted against the extension. Wow. 
uh, in the Grünheide uh, area. Because this is also kind of the argument, like it's going to be great for the local area. I remember when this started, mm. it's going to be loads of jobs. And I'm sure it does provide yeah. jobs and things, but... Well, I can give you some numbers. That's 62 fucking percent. Like, that's yeah. a big... That's a... Ugh. So the population of Grünheide is about 8,000. The place employs something like uh, currently employs 12,000 according <gasps> to local uh, Fuck me uh, 12,000 people I mean it's, it's a lot of people working there most of them it has to be said don't live in Grünheide no they a lot of people that I, I saw a lot of Polish people a lot of people come and uh, come from Berlin so like it's not really so that's the that's the kind of thing, if you need 12,000 workers or potentially 24,000 <laughs> Yeah. Not everyone in Grünheide is just going to down whatever. Like, no. I'm sure there's some people looking for that kind of work, but it's it's a specific thing. It's not like you've created like a, I don't know, like some kind of big like mall or, you know, something like that where there's lots of different, you could work in this kind of shop or you could have a food stall or you can also have kindergartens in there. And, and it, it's a... Like, you either want to work in electric cars or have those skills or you don't. Yeah. And, like, of those 8,000 people in Kunaida, like, how many is it going to be? And, like, who's going to want to, like, can people even afford, if they're working in the factory, to have apartments there and then spend their money locally? Yeah. So, it's it, the, 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 it's, the politics is, is a bit complicated. Basically, the, the Landesregierung of Brandenburg is all in favour. And that is SPD and Greens and currently. And why Greens? Yeah, because they're, it's all like, oh, the economy and we're going to and we're gonna build please, this thing. Please, please yeah. be voting for us. Don't actually kill <laughs> us in, with pitchforks. In fact, every party in the Brandenburg Landtag, Brandenburg State Parliament, is in favour except for the AFD. <laughs> they have come out against the Tesla extension. Interesting. So, this, so there's, there's this weird alliance between... Um, yeah, climate activists, local local citizens of Grünheide and the AFD. Now, there's been there was a pro big protest last weekend, where according to some local media, I don't know exactly, but there were some fights breaking out with among pro protesters because there were like some of them were Alta Norman and some of them were neo Nazis. <laughs> oh God, that's <laughs> and, tough. And uh, that's there was, really like, tough. <laughs> <laughs> So there's like you know there was like a kind of there was a lot of tension and the the citizens initiative which is mainly left wing green type people a lot of conservationists a lot of scientists a lot of other local politicians that's their that's their they're they're, they're very clearly against the AFD and resent the fact that the AFD have come in and come out against this I and they why. they is it because it's it like a popular yeah so they say that it's opportunism opportunism that they say that the, the 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 AFD are just you know going which way the wind blows and they they know that it's, it's something that yeah. will piss people off yeah, okay. and they know it's against the local the, the Brandenburg state government and they know that and they can say and anyway we hate electric cars uh ah wow so they get to play both hmm. cards and like they their... can say oh by the way the people working the in these factories are mainly polish people and foreign workers or berliners so it's like plays into that narrative of like of you know, brandenburg like yeah, this yeah. is in yeah so that's the afd argument the obviously the local the, the the protesters in the trees have like hate this like i went to speak to some of the people there and i you know they they i would say that the and how many people roughly are there in the trees about 100 apparently quite a lot send them out like a slab of maggots do they like maggots and it's probably not it's probably really maggots probably terrible for the environment <laughs> it's really beautifully organized i have to say they're, they're very they had a, when i was when i got there this morning they were having a plenary and they had a big meeting where they were having a to-do list about what the how they're preparing for oh, yeah. the, the police coming perhaps at the weekend german eco warriors there's a bunch <laughs> yeah. we can be yeah that's amazing uh, they were a little bit and they obviously bristled when i I, when I asked the the, the the spokesperson, you know, oh, how does it feel to be on the same side as the AFD? And they said, we are not, we are not on the same side of the AFD. AFD are racist and transphobic and sexist and everything. And we resent the fact that they are mm. even in on this. The I did speak also speak to and the local AFD Landtagsabgeordneter mm -hmm. who talked about 
who she mainly talked about the effect on local schools because think of the children <laughs> yeah. fuck off so the fangschleuser bar it was mainly to do with the bahnhof so uh apparently it's so weird that i know exactly where you are <laughs> like i know that fucking bahnhof and and it's like quite a pretty little place little it's area. one of those wonderful like this is what happened in ireland they ripped up all the railways so we don't have any but you can see the old stations like from what i remember unless i'm misrem- like one of those ones where it's not really like a station or anything it's just kind of like a track and then two yeah. kind of platforms yeah and it's just and you have to stand back that. because most trains don't stop there so you've got ah. these massive trains steaming through yeah. and, and, it, and it sort of says warns you to watch out when trains go through anyway so she said that they want because apparently they want to take out this train station and move it closer to the factory that's part of the what they're applying for what tesla are applying mm-hmm. for is to move this station closer to the factory and and that is not good for the local schools because there's a tra- that train station is used by about 800 school children apparently at the um, moment so that is like another okay. detail yeah so it's like kind of a big wow, thing going on there a, that's <laughs> it's a got a lot, lot happening that is a and lot. it's all going to be might be decided this this weekend so the mayor of uh, Grünheide, who is also in favor who's independent mm. uh there is a, a meeting going on actually this evening Do in which 62 percent of your constituents yeah and, and that's not a big and he, he this will be a mayor he's apparently he's been mayor for 20 years and he'll know all his constituents yeah. <laughs> there's only like eight thousand people uh, you know so and he may well be ousted now but the the afd are trying to oust him essentially that's what's sort of he's just him. an independent lad he is obviously yeah. like Kroonheider's yeah golden he's also boy. He's also former Stasi, should mention. <laughs> There's, I Googled, wow, how many I, layers of this Grunheide onion are there going to be? So I googled him and the first thing that came up was this story from 2019 where it was revealed that he was a, an informant for the Stasi. Uh, and uh, he, he managed to survive that scandal, but I don't think it helped him, put it that way. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Oh, and they have to, aren't like stupid in this regard like obviously all of their ideas are dumb and stupid but like mm. they're like the polling really high in in Brandenburg particularly but they know how to you know they yeah. know how to play local issues exactly and, and so uh, they can sweep in and be like oh this mm. ecstasy lad wants all of these berlin polish people to come and <laughs> block your kids way to school with electric cars yeah Oh. And let's not forget, uh, Elon Musk uh, tweeted his support for the AFD. Do Elon Musk that? is is a literal fascist now. Like it's <laughs> yeah. it's not yeah. it's no longer kind of like obviously all these tech bros are super right like wing like like that's just so yeah. He just it, like it, there's there's all these tweets that and he yeah he said something like did he retweet an AFD tweet which was about he basically said that AFD is is right about immigrants. It's what he tweeted. Something. He said that the AFD in Germany is a good party because they're against immigration. Wow! I didn't. Yeah. I haven't got the actual tweet in front of me, but it's well, on, it was I along just those know lines. of one where he was like I'll something about now. the German government were f- helping fund like people saving the lives of people drowning in the Mediterranean or drowning in trying to get to Europe, and he tweeted like, "Are the German people aware of this?" Yeah. The in the foreign ministry be like yeah it's called saving lives or something i can't remember yeah i think we had an episode that we talked about this. we might have done yeah oh I'm quite uh, on my horrible berry water what i haven't talked about is the arson attack yes it was in flames oil tesla so no hang on it wasn't in flame what happened was it was in flames get your news here was it not in flames no. Oh, but that's arson. They set no? fire to a a, a pylon and, and like a, a, a yeah. thing, and it cut off the electricity to the Tesla factory for a couple of days, so they couldn't make any cars for a couple of days. Oh, that's what happened. Okay, sorry. So, but it caused a lot of 
problems because now everyone, especially locals, were saying, "Oh, was this something to do with this camp? You know, where they were the the, the, the in the forest mm-hmm. because they looked like the same type of people because it was links extremist and it was a local group claimed responsibility for it. Something something volcano, some group claim of mm-hmm. responsibility." But the camp says it had nothing to do with us. The people do it at the time. Yeah. We were peaceful protesters. But obviously in the popular imagination, it looks like they were, you know, they're the same uh, kind of people. Mm. So there was a little bit of, of negativity. Like the, the left is like, or these eco protesters have gone too far, like the Klima Kleber and stuff like yeah. that. Which, so I mean, I don't, I don't know. I do think it is something we need to tread carefully with so we... yeah so and the burger initiative said that the arson attack was really unhelpful it, like you know it, it it made things worse for us because it made us you know we we reject any kind of violence and uh well i, I do want to be clear though it's not violence if it's get like this is the other insane thing that happens where violence on the right is against people and then violence on the left is in the yeah. vast majority of cases against property or yeah. things like this or shutting down a coal plant for or a coal mine for a few days or whatever. So not violence. Was anyone hurt? No, they weren't right. hurt, but it wasn't just the factory that was affected. A few hundred homes also lost power. I, exactly. So it Once was... again, what I... <laughs> Just want to be very, like I, it's a no, it's bad and it's annoying and I'm not saying that it's morally justified, but I think this idea where we start talking about equating violence and links radical and I don't know. Yeah, obviously it's not the same as you know killing someone. Well, is it violence? Yeah. Well, it's no, it's property it's, damage. It's it's, it's, it's yeah it's civil like, disobedience, and I think we can say that if we start just yeah. <laughs> But but it has made the case for this because they these protesters were like we had we we have applied for an extension and now there's less it's now less likely that those protesters will be able to there's it's gonna it's probably gonna kick off this weekend because gonna, yeah those waters because, have been muddied yeah. and I totally understand yeah. that I'm not I'm not and, disputing know. that anyway so that's basically wow it. that's a lot. <laughs> That is a that's a lot. It's very hard for me to have a very black and white opinion that I'm going to shout about now while I'm in my cups. What did you did you? So this is all kind of happening. What about the people who are actually? Is this factory doing anything good? Is it providing nice work for people? Is it? No, there have been some accidents in the in the factory. Of course, yes, and brilliant. a lot of trade unions and Linker Party have been saying, you know. We need to investigate what the the the, the conditions. And are in the, the, the Tesla workers. workers like heavily unionized? I or? believe that I I walk I went past there and I saw they were doing elections for a works council. Okay. I know that IGM was getting involved in trying to unionize them. I yeah I think they are unionizing, but I did notice when I because I went on a shuttle bus with some of the workers to the te- to the factory. Uh, I did notice that n- most of them weren't German. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, you obviously they can still unionize, but how would it how does, well there do are you know barriers to this <laughs> yeah. exactly? Yeah. And also, you never know how these employment contracts. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm speculating, but it yeah would make sense to me that a fascist megalomaniac capitalist nut job bent on taking us into space and also poisoning our waters <laughs> is maybe not the best. Yeah, employer. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, what was the bus like? So, because I have seen these buses, because when I go to Prague on the bus, obviously going to Prague on the train is beautiful. But if I can just do a shout out to the Czech bus company Regio Jet, <laughs> which is my fucking favorite thing, honestly, really cheap and wonderful. They have double decker buses, and if you get the first seats on the double decker bus like upstairs it's like you're in business class they even have little screens oh wow that's amazing, amazing. and then yeah. you get some czech beer no they don't give you beer oh you they say they give beer. you coffee i've never seen no you can't buy beer you have to bring your own beer but it's lovely take okay. anyway i go there from sudkreuz and that seems to be where some of the tesla buses drop people off okay. and it's this weird kind of 
not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory vibes because no one ever saw the workers coming in and out. But it is just like these big, dark buses roll in and lots of people get off wearing like branded Tesla merch. Hmm. I do think I remember seeing one or two having a mega can on their fire up and I was like, <laughs> hello. <Okay. laughs> yeah. So oh, what, I was, can t- what was the vibe like? On, on the bus? Yeah. Well, it was just loads of people going to work. So they got off at Fangschleuser and there's a shuttle bus that takes them to the factory. Oh, you were going from there? Yeah. There's a bus that takes them to Sudko. It's like all that way. No, no. The bus takes them from Fangschleuser. Well, what are these Bahnhof? buses coming into Sudko then? Oh, I don't know. Because they're definitely Bahnhof. Tesla. Like oh. they're they're just those workers' buses. Uh, I don't know. <gasps> I mean, I guess the. I will do this. I thought you'd been on the whole thing. No, no. Oh, I only went, went on, on the. Oh, okay, on, okay. I went around the corner. Anyway, so I, I had a, a small. It wasn't really an experience, but I went to the reception because I'd heard that on Thursdays. They have a a burger dialogue, so a citizens dialogue day for two hours, like a question and answer session where I guess local people can come and ask questions. And so I thought, oh, that'd be really doing something if you have to have in your institution (laughs) some period of the time. Yeah, where people can come and ask you questions. So I think that what I think is that the Tesla is a massive American company, obviously, and they are not used to the way things work in Germany. <laughs> and if you build a massive factory in the middle of somewhere in America, then I think everything, you know, like, you know, you know, it's just like capitalism. Yeah, he's fine. But in Germany, you have to sort of do something a little bit, reach out to the community a little bit. And so they had this like burger dialogue. And I went there to the reception. I said, oh, I heard there's a burger dialogue coming up. And the receptionist like typed into a computer and looked. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, it's at 3.30. And I said, okay, I'll just wait here. And then five minutes later, a man came out. And he said, oh, I heard you were here for the burger dialogue. And I said, yeah. And I hadn't said I was a journalist or anything. And he said, oh, it's cancelled today. Ah. <laughs> I said, Why? And then he said, we have no information on why it has been cancelled. <laughs> and what kind of room are you sitting in? Because I'm, I'm picturing like peak dystopia kind of. Is it just like a normal... F- no, I, I, it, was, it was just a... It was, a, it was like there was a, a Tesla car there. And there was someone working on a laptop. And there was a coffee machine. And it was, it was, the, it was the reception area. Okay, so like I was a just normal... Sitting on a, it wasn't very comfortable, I have to say, oh. as, a, for, as reception areas go. And the coffee, so the, there was this coffee machine where you had to, you had to like scan a QR code to get to order a coffee from the coffee machine. <laughs> there was a robot. So you had to, you, there was like a coffee machine. He said, scan, if you want a coffee, scan this QR code. And then you, then you scan the QR code. And there's not very good reception out in Brandenburg. But after a while, I got, there's the, I got them. all reception in Fangschleus, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. So after a while, I got the menu and then I... Yeah, I clicked on a coffee and then the the the, mach- the robot sprang into life. There was like a robot arm sprang into life and gave me a coffee through a glass wall. Wow. Um, Just like a vending machine, but much less. <laughs> but much <impressioned>. less. <laughs> Great. But really inefficient blend- vending machine. Okay. <laughs> which um, involves smartphones. Uh, and probably cookies, so they know you've been there. <laughs> so... Yeah, also, yeah, I had to give my name. On the plus side, the coffee was free. On the minus side, it was terrible. Oh, I, I mean, Elon! Really, <laughs> I mean, really, if a robot gives you coffee, you'd expect at least they'd have good coffee. It was awful coffee, right? What? Like, genuinely okay, I, I mean, terrible coffee. Poison the water, but like at least... <laughs> this is the thing. Yeah. But this was supposed to be the fucking promise. And I think that's such a good metaphor like the promise of capitalism okay we're gonna have to maybe sacrifice a bit of this that and the other but you'll have stability and prosperity and a robot will serve you coffee and you're like well no because we've probably got people on shit working contracts with shit working conditions and fucking shit coffee no and elon musk just goes and fannies about being an absolute fascist wank bag being super anti-Semitic and mental. Like, I just... <laughs> no. I say, no, thank you very much. Teslas aren't even that fucking nice. 
No. I like a nice car. Yeah. Do you know there's a function in them? I was in one in the summer and there's a function in them where you... Because so first of all, there's... Have you ever been in a... You've, have you driven a Tesla? I would quite like to drive a Tesla. <laughs> I've driven an electric car, but not a Tesla. Yeah, some miles cars. So I do have the miles thing, even though it's very expensive. They have... Teslas, like I've never seen one close to me, but I will. Oh fucking... yeah, maybe I have had a Tesla. I, I, I thought I just had an electric Volkswagen, but maybe it wasn't because they nothing in it. Everything works through this sort of iPad. On there's there. this huge iPad, which yeah. I actually and which shows you, which I actually think is quite dangerous because, like, you're just looking at a big screen. You're looking. <laughs> it's so hard if you've ever sat in a pub with a fucking TV. You can't focus on anything <laughs> but the TV, so it's really dangerous. And then there's this thing where you can like. Pretend, like it'll do fart noises and you can have it from different parts of the car and pretend like your guests in the car are farting uh. I'm like this this is what we've sacrificed and it just it's just cheap and I don't like them at all and they're really expensive like this is mm. that is a hollow we have tried to believe in this promise of electric cars to solve and everyone told us it was going to be a problem and it's just not it's just a shit thing with fart noises that's ruining Fangschleuse for us all <laughs> and and taking away and exploiting the developing world as well with, oh with the, don't even like we haven't even got into the whole lithium thing like I kind of don't know how yeah. that works and I'm sort of refusing to learn <laughs> but I because I know it's just an absolute nightmare yeah anyway oh, so all right well that was my trip to Grünheide today pretty much all of it I described most of it yeah that was just today god you've packed a lot in okay yeah well thanks for going so i didn't have to i don't want to go back there now i tried to find out if you can if there's some kind of open day or a tour or anything no and apparently get a golden ticket for that this is real willy wonka shit a lot of journalists have told me that it's almost impossible to ever get a statement from Tesla. He just they just never speak to the press. They just they just don't have a press department. They yeah, just... this is not a normal company. <laughs> no. This is not a this is a bad thing. Yeah. It's bad. They just don't they just don't answer any press requests. Yeah, and, they're they're uh, bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like some things I often understand like the political situation and how you deal with Tesla is incredibly complicated, but I don't think the Tesla thing is very complicated. Mm. Is bad and it's run by a fascist. I might go back next Thursday to see if they're, they're going to have another citizens dialogue and it will also Please be cancelled. Please just go every <laughs> said, Thursday. I work. I have a really full timetable on Thursdays, but if any Thursday I'm ever free, we could go. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, because it was just really odd that the way that I said, "Oh, is there a, a, a thing?" and they said, "Yeah, it's definitely happening." And then five minutes later, I said, "No, nah, actually, that's cancelled. So bizarre. It's cancelled." today uh okay well that's all the news well for another week how was your mega can oh i finished it ages ago oh yeah you haven't taken a sip for ages it is really nice oh did you like it it's given me a a, a lovely pineapple-y aftertaste oh buzz. okay I'd, I'd, I'd recommend it i mean oh, okay I, would I wouldn't want to drink like five fizz. of them <laughs> i wouldn't want to drink a lot of them but that one is nice and i think the problem with the berry fizz is, so I know some people of my friends really love the really, really sweet. Like there's a JD berry one and like the Gordon's pink gin, those really sweet ones. But I think this one has tried to be like too classy. So it's like sweet, but also watery like a yeah, seltzer. Well, so I wouldn't even recommend it. Those, I wouldn't. I, I don't know. It says it's on it made like, with natural flavors. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I think this is supposed to be natural. Do you know what? It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. So that's I, our I, verdict on absolute. Yeah, it's not that bad. And it's absolute. And I'm also <laughs> drunk. Yeah. I am so well. there's that. <laughs> okay. Um, Great. Take care, everyone. If you're in Berlin, this is absolutely not a plug that I'm involved with. I just think it's nice. There's a, it's St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of Irishy things happening. You can go to Babylon Kino. I don't know which one now, actually, of the Babylons. But just Google it and there's like Irish music in film and there's a particular film that I have no affiliation with, but I've seen it before. It's called North Circular, which is like a kind of journey as a lot about music and stuff as well through the North Circular Road in Dublin. And it was it, it was very, very beautiful. 
yeah. uh, I think. And there's also some activism happening from Irish people living in Berlin that want to protest some stuff. About it's Babylon Mitter on Babylon Saturday. Mitter, Saturday, go. 4 p.m. Irish music on screen. Yeah. I just Googled it quickly. Yeah. That's it looks good. good. Yeah. The the Camino Voyage. I think it yeah, go go see North Circular. It's in Irish with English subtitles. There you go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any any other Irish things happening? No, I'm going to Ireland tomorrow. I'm oh, very okay. excited. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for having me. Thanks, Conrad. <laughs> Again, didn't want the news, but if I have to have it, I would always rather you deliver it to me. <laughs> Filtered through me and a cocktail. Yes, those are, <laughs> those are the things that I need. Thank you okay. very much. Okay. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. message to give to people. So. I like to think that we have a quite a positive impact on our listeners. I hope so. Because we try and get them to defy the fear of listening to the news all day. I mean, it's better than reading a German newspaper. Surely. It may, yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend listening to our podcast more than reading any German newspaper. German newspapers barely have pictures. So. Like, fucking, it's just, it's just a brick of text. Oh, yes. It's yeah, and they seem to make a virtue of it. They think it's, like, so great to have no oh, pe- not like you Americans no pictures, with your fucking... <laughs> colour pictures. <laughs> decadent pictures in I your know. newspapers. Yeah, What's but... that, a crossword puzzle? Oh, no <laughs> you wonder to... you had Trump. Jesus Christ, everyone. Like, there's a middle guy. You have to concentrate on the news. It's very important. Oh. You have to, like, oh, keep this there. Uh, have a, have a mega. I have a mega. Give us a picture every now and then. Just and a wee picture, maybe a, you know, <laughs> yeah. a diagram. <laughs>